Thanks, uh, Warwick. That was, uh, that was a promotion I wasn't expecting. Um, I want to thank everyone for this opportunity. Um, what brings me here is the collision of worlds, really. My worlds collide. They collided. I was a journalist, and I'm now a journalism educator and a media researcher. And at the heart of that collision, I suppose, really, was the arrival of my son, our son, Mac, who came to be 14 weeks early. He was um, about 500 grams. So that's, if you imagine, that's about the size of a block of butter, maybe spread a little more thinly. And um, he got through his prematurity, I suppose, in, to degrees pretty well. But then, let's, let's just say there were events and um, he now has an acquired brain injury and severe cerebral palsy. And what that did was uh, a disability came knocking. Disability not only came knocking, but it came kind of charging through the door. And it reminded me, it, 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 I liken it to the game that maybe some of you would have played when you were kids, maybe not so much now, called Punch Buggy. It's that game where you're sitting in the back seat, and I used to sit in the back seat with my brothers and we'd be driving, and the challenge was to spot the first yellow Volkswagen. And whoever got to spot it got to deliver the first punch to the arm of the person sitting next to them. Now, despite the kind of innate violence embedded in the game, it did do something. It actually raised awareness. You know, because once you'd spotted the first one, you just couldn't help but see yellow punch buggies everywhere. So they're like fists flying left, right and centre. And disability is like that. Until you see it clearly for the first time, you don't really see it, but when you see it, when it comes knocking on your door, you can't help but see it everywhere. And that shouldn't be a surprise to any of us. It really shouldn't be a surprise to any of us. One in five Australians, one in five people worldwide, according to the World Health Organisation, identify as being disabled or having a disability. So that's a lot of doors being knocked on. And that's a lot of stories being told. And that's what brings me here. I now research the way people with disability are represented in news media, particularly Australian news media at the moment. And that's that collision of worlds. I use some models that were designed by researchers Clogston and Haller in the early to mid-90s as kind of my guide, my, my underpinning tool for a lot of the work that I do. Those models inform the way I go about looking at uh, media coverage and representation of people with disability. They had a couple of uh, key areas, overarching frames, if you like. So those, uh, one was traditional and one was progressive. The traditional models really centred around those medical representations, the idea that disability or impairment is something that needs to be fixed. And that social, and that, um, social pathology model, that really is that charity and disability is a, uh, sorry, disability is really a charity frame or a pity frame or something that society needs to look after those poor people. And then, you know, within the pro progressive frame, you see more, more of a focus on, say, civil rights or human rights, and even that idea of legal rights where people with uh, impairment and disability stand up and take their own legal uh, uh, livelihoods in their hands and, and cause action for themselves. So those frames are what uh, Clogston and Haller identified. 
And I use them in my research, even today, looking in Australia at the uh, National Disability Insurance Scheme, and I look at, are these models still present? And it is quite interesting that, uh, despite that passage of time, we really do still see those traditional frames of disability represented in our news. Also see those frames of, of hero and tragedy, really something that is embedded in those traditional frames, particularly that social pathology model. So we get the heroes and we get the tragic and we also get the inspirational. Stella Young, former journalist, editor, commentator, comedian, activist, the late Stella Young, we lost her a couple of years ago, delivered a, a very well-known TED talk where she spoke about something called inspiration porn. And I, and, and I look closely at that concept too within my research and that idea of heroism being embedded in coverage for what really are questionable reasons. Stella put it pretty well when she said, well, she put it very well, when she said, I'm not your inspiration, thank you very much. And she was talking about that idea that people with disability are, are somehow heroic for doing the everyday, for getting a job, getting an education, and sometimes celebrated for getting out of bed. Those frames that appear within our news coverage and within uh, online conversations, that is what the challenge is. That is where we need to look very closely at what it is that is representing people with disability. Stella wanted us to think about that when she spoke about inspiration porn. And I look at that and those hero models and those tragic models within Australian news media coverage. And it is interesting because despite that time, despite the conversation being on, going on for as long as it has, they are still very present and present to the degree that they are uh, almost daily. Where people with impairment are celebrated and put in new, into news stories within a frame of charity or within a frame of, of being a hero because they've got a job or because they tried to get a haircut. Very recently, a story appeared that basically said, look at the barber trying, who has done such a great thing. He's this person who needed, he wanted his haircut, who couldn't access the barber shop, was taken outside and given the haircut by the very charitable uh, hairdresser. And this is not a criticism of the hairdresser at all. This is simply to say that that frame of charity and pity that was put on that person who was trying to get a haircut was all wrong. The frame around that story should have been about civil rights, should have been about human rights, rather than this sort of frame that celebrated the barber and really ignored the person who was trying to get the haircut. It wasn't even featured in the story. No, no voice being present. And the same when you have representations of people who, with impairment getting jobs and celebrated because they get jobs. If that's the frame we want to put around stories, then we are wrong. It needs to be challenged. Because that should have been why aren't people with disability getting jobs? These are the questions. The social model of disability is key to this. The social model of disability says that disability is a construct. Impairment is present in our society. Impairment in an ageing and growing population is going to be more and more something that an, our entire communities will deal with physical, cognitive, intellectual disability. And the social model says that if a society does not acknowledge and do anything about impairment, 
or try to work to create an inclusive subject, then they are very much creating disability. So we need to move beyond that. We need to move beyond. And the good news is change is happening. Change is happening. That story about the barber, acknowledged publicly. A new story. We got it wrong. We could have done better. We will do better. That's old dogs learning new tricks, doing things better and leading by example. And all power to that publication. It was a human rights story. It wasn't a charity story. So here's the challenge. For journalists as agenda setters, for people who can say this is important, this is how we should do this, and this issue, this story, could be done better. It could be done with a more significant angle rather than those comfortable hero and tragic frames. They need to see disability as part of the human fabric, as part of the tapestry of humanity, a thread that connects rather than segregates. Thank you.